Well, hello, Tool and Die guys. It's again Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die guy, with a um, follow up video from um, the video I did a week ago regarding finding the center of a hex. And um, a few people had some questions about how I did the math and could I do it without AutoCAD? Well, of course I could do it without AutoCAD. I'm the Tool and Die guy. So we're going to go old school here tonight. So uh, let's move along here. Just a reminder, you know, my formal training was as a mold maker, and we deal with angles all the time. And uh, because of that, uh, I had to calculate ball dimensions daily. And, of course, no AutoCAD back then, okay? So you're always trying to locate the triangle that needs to be solved for a ball dimension. And that's why I always spend the time to color in the triangle. If you look at my notebooks and stuff, you, you got to find out which triangle you're trying to uh, calculate to solve. To solve the leg on any 90 degree triangle, you have to know two things, right? You need to know the length of at least one side of the triangle and you need to know the angle. If you need to know the angle, you need to know at least two sides. And we'll go through that more if you guys are still interested in this uh, because it's important. Uh, I Again, I believe uh, there's only about three of us in the shop that uh, we have about 150 people that really understand what a ball dimension is and how to use them. Um, I was calculating these many years before AutoCAD, as I already said. Uh, but knowing how to do this really puts you way ahead of probably at this time, not 20 years ago. At this time, I, about probably 90% of your peers, all right? This is the gold standard for measuring angles, all right? Or picking up an angle on a part that you need to tip up on an angle and you want to locate an angled hole, we'll get into it. So, back to our original video. I had this hex stock that I just wanted to find the center of it. Now, obviously, it was easy to find the center of this on the y-axis because um, it's a two and a half inch hex, so but just touch here, move over an inch and a quarter. But how do we get from here to here? You know, you know there's different ways to do it, but I decided to do it with a ball dimension. So first thing I did is I have, you know, uh, this little 30 degree angle block. Of course, I have these angle blocks from 1 to 30. And uh, for those of you, I think I mentioned this before, the hole in that there was uh, um, so you could dip it in the oil after heat treating. You put a wire through that, all right? And you'd be able to get it back out of the tank. So we've got a quarter inch dollop in here held on by a pot magnet. And I come down with my digital height gauge and I touch there, okay? And I get this. 1.432, one inch, 432 thousandths from the base plate, the surface plate, to the top of my quarter inch delpin. But what I really want to know is what it is from here to the theoretical sharp. And why is that important? Well, what if there was a 16th radius on there? You couldn't just touch here and measure there, right? So you, you, you what we're trying to establish is that theoretical point. Now, originally, uh, this is what we came up with from this flat to the center was one inch, 956 thousandths and six tenths. So we've got a couple triangles to solve here. As I said, I color them in uh, when I'm doing it by hand. So let's take a look at these two triangles. We want to solve for A, which is the, uh, um, the 30 degree angular block I have. And then we need to solve for B. All right. So again, we're going to go old school tonight. Uh, so we're trying to solve for A. And if you look here, I have drawn in the little triangle I need to solve for. So we know this is a quarter inch ball. So we know that there is uh, from the center of the ball, because it's a quarter inch, uh, quarter inch diameter pin from here to here is half of that eighth of an inch. Good. Then we also can take this angle, which is, is 60 from here to here, from this plane to this plane, 60, and divide that by 2, it's a 30-degree angle. So what we're trying to find is this little leg right here, this short little side here. That's going to solve a big problem for us, all right? So, old school. Sorry for the crappy picture there. I scanned that in. That's my handy-dandy Carlane book. And... Uh, we're going to go to page uh, the page with the 30 degree angle on it. The M stands for minutes. Of course, we're at zero minutes. Don't worry, I'm going to blow this up. 
So 30 degrees, zero minutes. We need the tangent. 0.57735. And, you know, I guess I'll probably have to do a, a little bit more of a math class on solving triangles. But in this case, we need to find the tangent of 30 degrees uh, over an eighth of an inch. So the formula is eighth of an inch. That's this side of the triangle. That's half the ball. Tangent of 30 degrees. It looks like this. Eighth of an inch, 0.125 times 0.57735. That's from our trig book, okay? That equals 72 thousandths and two tenths. So, A, if we take the one inch, 432 thousandths, and we subtract that little triangle we just solved, 72 thousandths and two tenths, minus, again, an eighth of an inch for half the ball, we finally get down to the theoretical sharp. This particular block is one inch, 234 thousandths and eight tenths. And just for fun, I did put my height gauge on that, with my digital height gauge, and it measures uh, theoretical to the sharp without a ball, one inch, about one inch, 230. So we're missing about five thousandths there. For certain things that might not matter, but for this, you know, we want it right here. So that's what happens when you stone an edge off. Okay. All right. Moving along. We have to solve this triangle now. We already know this one. We solve that one. A. B. Well, we know this side of the triangle, which is half of the hex, 2.500. Half of that is uh, 1, 2, uh, 100, 1 inch, 250 thousandths, inch and a quarter. And we know the angle is 30. So we can solve for B, inch and a quarter times a tangent of 30, like this, inch and a quarter times that, again, that 0.57735 gives us a B dimension of 0.7217 from here to here. So now we solve for A and we've solved for B using our trig book, all right? So there's the numbers we just solved together and it comes up to the number we originally had when I did an AutoCAD, I'm a tenth off due to rounding, okay? I think we'll live with that. Again, that was the original setup. Uh, I had a stop set, but I could touch right here. I had a magnet, a pop magnet, holding my little 30 degree block there onto this hex, touch here, move over, we're done. That's another view of it, all right? And the stop, as I said in the last video, worked well. Now, if you really want to go old school and get the Caroline, uh, Caroline book, these were everywhere back in the days. They actually sent them to their dealers and you would put your stamp on there. Okay, mine happens to say, I don't even know where it is right now. What's it say? Probably August Industrial Supply. I can't even read it. It's old. I think it is. But uh, they would let you put your own stamp in there and you'd hand these out to, to your customers. Um, but wait, there's more. I did so many ball dimensions back in those days. I made this chart. Yes, that is my handwriting. Kind of crazy, right? It saved me from having to solve so many triangles for nominal uh, angles. Half, one, two, three, four. No minutes. There's no half degrees on here. But then I skip from 15 to 20, 25, 30. Well, here we go right here. And I'm going to make this available under the video, a PDF you can download. You might not know how to use it yet, but it's yours to have. And we'll use it more as we go along. Uh, but again, uh, diameter ball. And I put this on there. It's a quarter inch diameter ball, so we go to here, and then we want A, okay? And A for a quarter inch ball at 30 degrees is 0.1972. Well, that's that eighth inch plus that 072 that we already calculated, 72,002 tenths, 1972. So I didn't really have to, for nominal angles, I don't have to calculate that. If, I, if it's a standard angle, I can use this great ball chart. You know, I looked it up online, I didn't. I can't even find one of these to give to you guys or send you there. Uh, I guess nobody does this anymore. And maybe you'll fi find one. They used to like, have laminated ones of these, but can not find one? And it's just to make things very clear here. That ball chart. So this is the angle we already solved for that little that, that little leg we solved for. Okay, seventy two thousandths and two tenths plus an eighth of an inch for half the ball, which is a quarter inch. So we end up from here. To here, 197 thousandths and two tenths. All right, 
So that's how it works. Now you can save yourself a lot of headaches. I'll show you how to do this. You can just get one of these calculators for like 20 bucks. And they've got the sine, cosine, and tangent functions right on them for solving all of your trigonometry problems. And finally, uh, maybe the next video, and maybe if you feel like doing this yourself and show me how smart you are, um, I get it. You guys are smart. But for you newbies, um, here's a piece of material. Uh, two inches in for the edge. I got to drill a, let's just call it a, a three-quarter inch hole right through it. Well, now I got to put this thing in my vise or to put it on a sign bar or whatever, tip it up at 10 degrees. I got to get from this, this theoretical point to here. Well, again, if there's a chamfer on here or missing edge, you can't just touch there with your edge finder. You've got to put a ball on there. So in this case, I use a half-inch ball, okay? And uh, I would touch there, and now I know exactly how much to move over. If you want to solve the problem for me, put it underneath here. And again, my pleasure to share my stuff with you, my knowledge, my old-school stuff, Carlane Trig Book. Can't believe I still have mine. It's only been like 48 years. Hung in there pretty well. I'm the Tool and Die Guy, broadcasting from Erie, Pennsylvania. I hope you enjoyed that video. I will keep going with the ball dimensions as we move along.